Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, this is another one of Margot's weekly challenges from the Facebook group. And we're going to have a go at painting a lovely ladybird or a ladybug if you're North American or a cochinelle if you're French or... A... No, I don't know anymore. So, to start with, we're going to paint this nice and loose 20 minute exercise followed by this tighter, much more detailed painting. And don't forget to stick around to the very end because we've got some wonderful examples from the Facebook group. So come and join me and we'll paint these step by step together. Okay, today's materials for this first demo, my paper is some Winsor & Newton Professional, it's 100% cotton, cold press paper, it's on a block so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours, yellow ochre, dioxetine purple, magenta, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, Payne's grey, cadmium red and alizarin crimson. And just three brushes from my range today, my three quarter inch flat, number six and number 12 round. Okay, so here's our beautiful reference photograph that I got from Pixabay. And there's no drawing template for this first one as it's nice and simple. Off we go. So I'm going to be using a squarish format today and as normal wetting the background as I want to achieve that lovely out of focus background of the reference photo but all very loose and impressionistic. Right, so starting with a very watery mix of yellow ochre and dropping it in using my large flat brush straight into the wet. And here with the purple, still a very watery mix and letting it blend into the yellow. Now with a much stronger mix. Now I'll list all the colours I'm using below for the lavender. I think it's a lavender. Anyway, the important thing is I'm not trying to be too defined, just suggestive blobby shapes and letting them mix and blend on the paper. Why not a few splats here and there? letting the paint work for you without fiddling. So here for a little stem or a bit of branch, so just a touch of yellow ochre with some burnt umber but of course all still very wet. So all these washes have to be pre-mixed and ready to go. Now for the exciting bit, just dropping in a few blobs of clean water. So here with the tissue I'm simply lifting out a few highlights and perhaps the suggestion of a few white petals. Now this is dried, you can see those lovely force back runs created by dropping in those watery blobs. They're all effects that you could never try and paint. Now for the little fella and a watery mix of cadmium red, but any bright warm red will do. Next, straight into the wet with a stronger milky mix of alizarin crimson to create a slightly darker shadow side. Now dry off the brush and just lift out some of these highlights, creating that sheen on his shell. a little 
little dab with the tissue. Now it's probably not called a shell and it's bound to have some fancy name, but I don't know. Now I'm using my small number six to lift out these little highlights. Next with some burnt umber for these twiggy bits. And you can see I've got a few little back runs on his body caused by the uneven drying time, but I'm quite happy with the effect. for his black bit and I'm using a watery Payne's grey but dropping in a much stronger mix in the bottom section. Now I think most of his legs are directly under his shell as he's hanging onto this branch. I'm also using some clean water to soften some of these edges. And exactly the same with the spots, just dropping in some clean water so everything doesn't look too sharp and defined. here where the spot hits that little bright shine just lift out some of the color a few little pale gray details here now finally with some white gouache straight from the tube for some nice little highlights we go, quick and simple, and see if you can do it all in under half an hour. So, now it's half time. Well, it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of the Ladybird Organic Red Wine? Yeah, it really is a thing. Okay, for the second demo, the paper I'm using is some Saunders Waterford again, 100% cotton, this time a rough texture, and of course it's on a block, so it won't need stretching. Colours for this one, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, sap green, magenta, burnt umber, Payne's grey, cadmium red, and alizarin crimson, and the same three brushes from my range. Another stunning photo, courtesy of Pixabay. So, off we go again and of course starting with the background and wetting with clean water. Now this drawing template is available to download from my website free of charge, link in the description below. Now all my green mixes I'm using various combinations of cadmium yellow and French ultramarine. Now ultramarine is one of the best granulating colours there are so that's definitely the effect I want for my greens today and I'm still using my flat brush. Now I'm going to paint a vignette style painting today, leaving lots of white paper around all sides. So here for a little added brightness, I'm dropping in a touch of sap green. 
Now I do have a video on mixing greens, link above if you're interested. And what I always like to do is get a good contrast between very yellowy greens and very bluey greens. So I'm just a little concerned here that those pencil lines are a little too strong and as it's my intention to create a fairly realistic painting I'm going to knock back some of those pencil lines. So re-wetting the flower here with clean water using my number 12 brush. Now anyone know what this is? Some sort of thistle or maybe it's a clover? I don't know. straight away into the wet with this magenta. Now if you don't have this colour, any bright pink will do. And I'm just dropping in to the top of each petal. now for the very yellowy green and this time I've used a touch of lemon yellow into the mix to get a more bright and fresh green. And now dropping in a much bluer green into the bottom. here with a damp number six brush just lifting out a few highlights to give each petal a little bit more form and shape. Now once it's totally dry you can still rejuvenate some light by using a very wet brush and working away at the paper and lifting out with a tissue. Now staining colours like this yellowy green won't lift out quite so well as the more granulating colours like most blues. Just bringing out a few more details here with a stronger green. back with this pink for these details. Now I'm really trying for a realistic approach today so layering these details will really help.
and just a little bit of splattering. Strengthening my greens even more and again I've added in some sap green into the cadmium yellow and French ultramarine mix to give that little extra bit of strength. some burnt umber for the shadows under the ladybird and softening most of the edges with clean water. here a really strong consistency green. So next, now this is something I often find that after I've painted the main subject, there is not enough contrast with the background. Now I want these top pink petals to really pop out, so a little more re-wetting to the background and putting in some darker value greens. Again, using my cadmium yellow and French ultramarine mixes. Next, for these prickly spiky things. Now, I'm using a mix of alizarin crimson and burnt umber and just using one stroke with a press down and lift off motion which helps to give those lovely sharp tapered ends. of subtle green spikes here. Now finishing off the plant with just a few final details.
Oop, <laughs> just missed out a petal here. Now for the ladybird. And I'm painting this very much in the same way I painted him in the first tutorial, starting with a very watery bright red. Lifting out again the highlight with a damp brush. Then in with a stronger mix of the same colour. Dropping in the shadow colour of alizarin crimson into the wet wash. Now for his head and a little clean water first, then some Payne's Grey and dropping in a much darker value mix at the bottom. And his spots, same again, softening some of the edges with clean water. Final highlight touches with some white gouache.
there we go, all done in just over two hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you've given them both a go. They're great fun. So coming up now are the lovely ladybirds from the Facebook group. We had over a hundred entries, so sorry we couldn't show them all. These were just randomly selected. So as normal, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. So take care now, everyone. Bye for now.